Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So today I have a new flight controller, it's called the Omnibus F4 Corner Nano. Now this one actually caught my eye, not because of the suspended gyro, I really don't like this feature, some of you might, but I really don't like. Um, but just some of the options that this thing has and it's giving you for 30 bucks. So first of all, this is a 20 by 20 flight controller, so it's built for like super light quads as well as micros. So because we do have the 20 by 20 mounting hole solution going on here. Now, in theory, you can replace this gyro here to the ICM 2068 or the MPU 6000. So in theory, or this is how I purchased it. I purchased it with the MPU 6000 gyro, which is a good gyro. And I'm hoping that's the gyro that's in here. Let's talk about some of the specs before we go on into what I really like about this or what I think is pretty cool. And we'll eventually figure out once we actually install this guy and see how well it works. So. Uh, some of the specs here that this thing has a 5 volt regulator on board and can be powered anywhere between a 2 and a 4S LiPo. So that's a huge plus right there. Another thing is it has a Betaflight OSD chip. So that's just also beautiful. And they're stating they have LC filter for the VTX. Um, I haven't really just really looked into it just yet, but we'll see that as time goes on. And it also has something pretty crazy also. It does have a barometer right there. That's just, that's just pretty insane for a little micro with all these kinds of features. So if you didn't know, a barometer is basically um, just the option to do altitude hold and all that kind of crazy stuff. So if you're into that, you can do it with this guy. So that's pretty cool. So let's go ahead now and take a look at the pads on the bottom and how would we wire the power to this guy to get the actual current sensing to work. And I forgot to mention this thing has a current sensor. So that's, that's, that's just pretty crazy. Um, it's almost an all one flight controller, but it's not fully there. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the pads here. So we do have RX6 would be right there, TX6 right there, so that's cool. Next on the line we have RX3, and then TX3, and then next on the line we have 5 volt ground, and then we have our buzzers, would be these, this is the buzzer plus, buzzer minus, and then we also get another 5 volt. We have a PPM pad. So if you're still using a receiver with PPM, you could definitely do it right there. And then on the second on the list here would be the LED and then cam. Cam is where your camera yellow wire would go. Or would it? Because now we have VN and VO. So this is pretty, hmm. All right, so they're calling this cam, but this could be also a five volt. Now I could be wrong or I could be correct, but we'll figure that out once we build it. So this one might be a five volt, and I believe it's possibly a five volt. So it'd be like five volt ground, and then V in, and then here's video out. So, you know, the yellow line going to your camera, I mean your VTX, and the yellow line coming from your camera would go here. And I believe this is another five volt somehow, but we'll figure it out eventually. <clears throat> All right, so that's pretty cool. Oh, and we also have two little pads right here, R1 and T1. RX1 and TX1. So they do give us a lot of UARTs and I think it's pretty cool. However, they don't mention anything about uh, which UART is the S bus inverted on. I mean, about the specs, it's pretty much done. The board is pretty cool. I really do like the layout, but there's a couple things I really don't like. So it's supposed to go in your quadcopter like this. And as you can see here, or like this. Oh, wait. No, no, no. Like this. This is how it's supposed to go in your quadcopter in theory. And you can see the USBs on the right, that's cool, that's fine. And this is going to be sticking out to the left, I don't like that. And your battery and your power is going to be up in the front, so that's very annoying also. So that's a couple things that I really do not like about this board. The layout is not a great layout. And uh, yeah, if you wanted to connect your ESCs, you do have a connector right there. And they do provide you with some standoffs and the connector itself. So that's cool and done in that perspective. Okay, so now let's just say you wanted to power this guy up with a 4-in-1 ESC and you wanted the current sensing to work. So let's just take a look at this. Now I have this Hack RC 4-in-1 ESC and this is a Beale Holly 32 ESC. So I'm very curious to try this guy out and this is why I got him with this guy. We're going to be building him very soon with that new diatone frame. So that, that I really want to see how that's going to work out to be honest. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at these pads here. So we have LiPo in plus and out plus and then we have a ground. So there's there's really a couple ways to do this. What you want to do is you bring the boards like this and here's the power and we're going to have to imagine the, you know, the battery power. So what we want to do is we want to take a look at the out plus pad right there. This is where you would connect this red wire. So let's just say we soldered it on there. And then here you would bring the positive from the battery 
right here. So let's just say an XT30 connector and the red wire would go right here to the in plus. All right, so the positive voltage would pass through here to this and this way we get the current reading. In ground, you will probably put the two grounds together and just stick them right there on the ground pad. And what's so cool, you have two sides on the ground pad. This side's a little bit smaller than this side. So yeah, if you wanna put them just, I would wrap them together and solder them here. It might be a little bit tricky, but if you get it, it's gonna be beautiful. So that's how you would power this guy up and get the current sensor to work. It's pretty simple and uh, pretty straightforward. Just make sure you ground everything together. All right, so final thoughts, um, or just an overview thought of this. I mean, it seems promising, seems pretty cool. However, you know, it's, it's pretty, it's gonna take up a lot of space as you can see here. So let's actually get a quick measurement of what's the height of this stack here. All right, so the maximum height of the whole stack is 10 millimeters, so that's pretty big actually. So if you just take, it's gonna be a bit difficult. Yeah, but you see that? 10 millimeters from, this is the largest or longest or most part that's popping out and as well as the gyro here. So it's around 10 millimeters. So it's it's pretty, it's pretty big, pretty fat stack, I would say. And its size is around, let's just see here. Yeah, it's 27 by 27 millimeters. So it's it's pretty good board. It's pretty, you know, average size, except the height's pretty high. Uh, the height's pretty big. And um, yeah, and it's just full packed with features. So I'm very curious how it's gonna turn out. The quality looks decent. I would say the soldering quality. Um, they're using, I believe, uh, lead solder, not lead free solder, because everything is super shiny. And well, that's really it, guys. So that's going to conclude it for this video. I am going to be building these guys soon together. I'll be making a separate video for this and uh, we'll build them together with some Emacs uh, 1106 motors and seeing how well that turns out. So that's concluded for this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys have any questions or any suggestions, feel free to let me know and I will see you next time. See you guys, take care.